Good evening on this Palm Sunday night. I uh, was asked by several people, are you going to do a fireside chat? And um, so I guess, you know, I guess I should for all of Holy Week. Um, lots of things to think about, lots of things to, to go through here. So, um, you know, I was thinking about the text from John. I remember taking a course study on John when I was in seminary and Remember the the text from today where it uh, talked about the uh, the Greeks, uh, and of course me being a quarter Greek that didn't hurt it either. Uh, but the, the the Greeks showed up and they asked uh, Andrew and Philip, uh, or Philip, and who added Andrew to the collection. Then Andrew and Philip took them to Jesus, and then Jesus immediately said, "Now the hour has come uh, that the Son would be glorified." And that, that sense of, of the fact that now that the world had come looking for Jesus, uh, now it was time to do uh, his, his greatest of all work. In the Gospel of John, it's what's called the signs gospel. There's more um, miraculous signs that happen in John than any other of the Gospels. And the purpose of that, again, is not, Jesus doesn't do miracles and he doesn't do wonder signs um, so that you and I think that every time he turns around or we turn around, he should do a miracle. But he continually shows signs of what the power of the kingdom of God is about. And so his greatest of all signs is this week, uh, beginning today. Today he, he begins his coronation journey. And I don't know uh, how many of you have watched, uh, stayed up and watched the royals uh, when there's been a wedding or some major uh, major event. Uh, I remember uh, Princess Diana, all the rage, and uh, how people had just stayed up all night long to, to see the wedding there, and all the buildup that came for the week or so before, uh, kind of bringing it all up to a fever pitch uh, for this this miraculous moment, this wonderful moment that was going to happen uh, in history. And yet Jesus is stepping into his coronation uh, week this this week, and everything does come to a fever pitch, but it doesn't come to a fever pitch uh, the way you and I would think. Uh, his his fever pitch uh, event is that the world completely opposes him, uh, as we talked about today in worship, that, that uh, he steps in to break the status quo of our condition that would choose Barabbas over him. Uh, we We really need to to see and watch and wait with him this week as we uh, we follow along his journey uh, and all the different things he does, his teaching and his signs and his moments throughout this week. It's not a week to ignore. It's not a week to, to miss. Uh, you know, he when the Greeks come, he says, now the time has, has happened that it's ready for God's glory to be seen in him. Um and I remember tonight as we were, Becky and I went and took a walk finally and got to go uh, and stopped at a, a, one of our older members' houses and sat over six feet apart from them for a bit on the deck and sat and talked. And one of them was talking about uh, being a part of morning prayer and how they've come to, to look forward to that. They've come to never, never knowing what they were missing, never, never seeing it that way, but uh, now they, they long for and miss the opportunity to come and start their day uh, with God. It's it's when those moments happen to us in life, when we go from having to go to, to worship or having to usher or having to do our, our duty at the church and realizing, I get to come to worship. I, I get to uh, serve God as an usher. I get to do the work I do. Um, as a as a part of being one of his people becomes one of the miraculous signs that happens within us. Um, the miraculous sign that shows that the kingdom of God is working and it points to a bigger kingdom that changes people like you and I from people who go through the motions because of all the has tos and then we suddenly find ourselves falling in love with God and his people and his presence in a new way. And it just it just reflects to me as as we begin this week um, of how how keenly aware we need to be of that. I was looking at uh, Hebrews one 
verses 3 through 4, and the, the reading says that the sun is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as to the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. What a wonderful text to, to hear that, that sense that Jesus is going to go through this coronation week. He's going to make the purifications for your sin and for mine. He's going to do the work uh, that that opens a door for us to be able to speak and to come and to be heirs with him. And then he's going to sit down on the throne of power and be the ultimate of all judges. Not in a cruel or harsh way, but the ultimate of all judges who says, now all things have been made right. All the things that have been wrong in the world have been made right. Now let's live that way. Let's come that way. I, I think, you know, it depends on the gospel you read. Uh, in one of the gospels, Jesus cleans the temple a little bit farther down the week. And a little bit uh, in one of the gospels, he comes in and the, one of the first things he does is he goes and cleans the temple. Um, there's something to that as well. Uh, the cleaning of the temple is casting out all the stuff that has become what's not supposed to be in the temple. Uh, and, and Jesus' desire to clear it all out and to make it a house of prayer again, a house of worship and prayer of the Father. And uh, and today some people came around the church. I don't know for sure how many. I, I know of, of several uh, that I either saw or... Uh, uh, heard that they were there, and I, I give you all thanks for coming to help clean the outside uh, of the temple uh, that we worship in, the house that we worship in. What a what a gift uh, that you would come and spend your time uh, to to help clean up and prepare for Easter. We can't do it on the inside of the building. We can't we can't do it. But what a what a gift it is to gather together as God's people to clean and prepare, just like a coronation event, to get everything ready, to get everything set. Even though Easter isn't going to be the same uh, in many ways this year, it's going to be very much Easter. And there is no doubt about that, uh, that Easter is going to come and Easter is not any different. It's just not acted out in the same way in our lives. So I hope that in the midst of all your preparations this week for the coronation of Jesus, that you realize that the days all prior to Easter are exceptionally important. Without Easter, as I listened to one of my colleagues, I got to sit down after worship and watch him live for a while in New York doing his service. And as he said, Easter's the icing on the cake. Hmm, I think I've heard somebody say that before, that without all the rest, it becomes hollow. It becomes, it becomes fluff. But Easter is what is the crowning point that proves that the rest of it is exactly what Jesus has been talking about, what he's been desiring for us. So this week, let's watch the coronation events. Let's pay attention. Let's stay up late and, and do the work of reading his word and, and digging deeper with him and, and spending time in his passion and asking, how can I better and more closely walk with him in these days? Um, thank you again for all you do. God bless you all. I, I miss, uh, missing, uh, miss seeing you at all. Uh, the time I, I got to see a couple of uh, the younger kids who came with their family to pick up sticks and things today. It was so cool to get to see them. I, I'm looking at teddy bears at the uh, children's messages. It's just not the same. Uh, but I'm thinking of you all uh, every day and and longing to have you all gathered together again uh, in, in the fold. But uh, what a wonderful thing. And yet I know it's a hard thing for the younger kids who, who quite can't quite understand uh, one of the, the kids picked up a stick and, here, Pastor, this one's for you. And I said, that's awesome. Give me an air high five from a distance. And he came running over. He wanted to hug. And uh, I so missed that. And I said, oh, so sorry, buddy. We can't do that right now. We can't do that right now. But we're going to. I guarantee you. We're going to get to hug each other again and say hello and say, give each other a high five and do all the things we've been doing. Just like we're going to get to do it with Jesus. Our time is a little different now. It's not quite yet. The world's coming to him. The world's coming to see him. The time to be glorified and the time for God to be glorified is now. And the more we become a part of that, the more we become a miraculous sign that shows people, that demonstrates to people the power of God to overcome the things of this world and to set it all to rights. So, 
Until we see each other again, I hope you have a great night. God bless you, keep you safe in all that you do. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.